matrix A has one, two rows, and it has one, two columns. So this is a two by two, which means matrix A is also a square matrix because it has the same number of rows as it does columns. It has the same number of rows as it does columns. Matrix B, on the other hand, only has one row, so it is a one by one, two, three columns. So it is a one by three. It is not a square matrix. We really don't have a name for those dimensions. It's just a one by three. Okay, so once we've got that established, let's talk about <clears throat> our first operation, which is going to be scalar multiplication. <clears throat> scalar multiplication is just a fancy way of saying that you're going to multiply <clears throat> every entry within the matrix by the term that's in front. Now, typically the term in front is a constant, but this example, which is number six on your paper, um, is we're not multiplying by a constant, we're multiplying by a monomial. Okay, we name it that because it has a variable. Just to throw a little bit more vocabulary out at you, that's a monomial. It's not just a constant term because of the variable. Now, um, this one also has variables within the matrix. We're not going to deal with too many of these, but we are going to look at a few examples of it. Um, ultimately, we want to find the product, but let's use this as a little bit of extra example uh, for dimensions. Obviously, it has one row. This is a single term, okay? Um, so that's a column, and this is a column, so it has two columns, so it's a one by two. When we multiply it by this scalar uh, multiple, it is still going to be a one by two, okay? Scalar multiplication is not going to change the dimensions of our matrix here. Um, so we are going to multiply every term by that multiple in front. So I put parentheses because our first column there has multiple terms. It's not just a single number. It's six n squared plus one. We call that a binomial. And then we're also multiplying the second column by that. Now I deliberately leave a large gap there just because I don't want to confuse myself. Uh, I want to be able to see the difference in the two columns. I don't want that to merge into uh, one single column. Now we do need to simplify this. Okay, We don't just leave it that way. When we distribute the negative 3n, we get negative 18n cubed. n times n squared is n cubed. And then we've got negative 3n times 1, so that's minus 3n. When we multiply negative 3n times negative 6n, that is positive 18n squared. So that is the result of this scalar multiplication. Now, <clears throat> I, uh, well, hang on. let's go through the next example. Any questions about the scalar multiplication? Anything with the variables or anything? All right. We can also add and subtract our matrices. Okay, we can also add and subtract our matrices. And to do that, we're just going to add or subtract the corresponding entries. <clears throat> okay, we're going to add or subtract the corresponding entries. So we're going to combine the numbers that are in the same position in each matrix, but we have to follow order of operations um, with the way that the, the matrices are arranged. So I believe this is number 18 on your worksheet. Notice 
that we have three matrices. Now, matrices must have the same dimensions in order to add or subtract them. I don't have that up there, but uh, let's add that. They must have the same dimensions. Which, I mean, it makes sense because if you're adding and subtracting corresponding entries, if they don't have the same dimensions, then you're going to be missing entries um, in some of them. So they must have the same dimensions in order to be able to do this. But you'll notice this one has got some parentheses. Normally, we would just go left to right and follow you know, the adding and subtracting. But because there are parentheses here, Order of operations says you have to do what's inside the parentheses first. So we need to add these two matrices and get the result. And then we will do the first one minus the result that we just got. Okay, so we're going to have to do two steps here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy down that first one right below it because <clears throat> I'm not going to use it yet. Now, arguably, you could do this in one step, okay? But for in, in your notes, in your examples, I suggest um, <clears throat> working it out step by step so when you look back, you know what happened. All right, so I'm going to add these two matrices together. I'm going to add their corresponding entries. So we've got 2 plus 0. And again, you don't necessarily have to write it out like this, but if anybody looks back at my notes, I want them to be able to see where this came from. So 2 plus 0. 3 plus 5, 3 plus 4, negative 4 plus 4, negative 5 plus 3, negative 3 plus negative 2. So, because the way I wrote mine, I'm going to have to write it down again. <coughs> So I need to actually crunch those numbers there. So we get 2, 7, negative 2. <clears throat> and honestly, there's nothing special about the order that I did that in. Okay, When I was working through it, I went <clears throat> across the rows, and, or yeah, across the rows, and then I went down to the next row. It really doesn't matter what order you do it in, just so you're combining the correct terms. And then finally, we can subtract. Okay. Now, this is where most people tend to make mistakes because they're not very careful with their signs. Okay, so you really need to be careful with this. Um, so I'm going to take an extra step here to write down the numbers that I'm going to end up crunching. Sometimes, especially when subtraction and negative numbers are involved, um, we tend to put them in the wrong places, or when we type it into our calculator, we'll leave it off or add something extra in there. Okay, so negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative uh, 1 minus 7 is negative 8. 6 minus a negative 2, subtracting negative, same as adding a positive, so that gives us 8. Negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. Negative 6 minus 0 is negative 6. And negative 1 minus a negative 5. Subtracting a negative, same as adding a positive. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Okay, so that is your final answer. Okay, again, you probably could have gotten there a little bit quicker. You didn't have to write out everything that I did right here, but for this first example, I wanted you to see where all these numbers came from. Okay. Um, now, we're not doing an example with variables in it, but if you look at your paper, um, you'll see if you kind of look up, there are some examples there, the problems there that I want you to do that have variables. Remember this, when you are multiplying, okay, when you're multiplying with variables, you can combine any variables you want to. Okay? 
uh, you can multiply x times y. Um, I mean, you're going to end up with x, y, but you can still, you can combine variables like that. But when you're adding and subtracting, they have to have the exact same combination, so to speak, of variables. So um, let's just look really quickly at um, an example. 14 catches my eye here. Um, if you look at number 14, when we're subtracting those two matrices, that first entry would be negative 3u minus a negative v. You cannot combine those terms. The only thing you can do there is turn subtracting a negative into adding a positive. Okay, so your first entry should end up being 3u plus v. You cannot combine the u and the v. The only thing you can deal with is subtracting the negative is the same as adding a positive. Okay, so in order to combine when variables are involved, it has to be the exact same combination. Or if you look at number 13, negative 4x plus yx, you can't combine negative 4x and yx. You're just going to have to write it as negative 4x plus yx, okay? Yes, they both have an x, but they don't both have a y, all right? I think y'all know that. I just wanted to remind you of in the past, I've had quite a few questions about that.